Hello, hello everybody, this is your boy, Mr. Withers, bringing you a brand new video on my little YouTube channel today. And I know it's been a few months, and I know it's been, well, technically it's been a month since I've been doing this. And I wasn't really able to check my stuff due to us having a storm, and kind of, where I live, kind of got hit by a second and third wave of the, you know, Corona, but you know, I'm not going to talk about that because one of YouTube rules, you're not allowed to talk about anything that you know might hurt others. So you know. So yeah, power was down. And I really didn't have much to go off of, and I kind of was out of ideas, and plus I was getting ready for school stuff, and during. This school year, I'm most likely going to be homeschooled, so during the time I'm on the computer and stuff, during short breaks and all that, I'll be able to make videos and post then. So if some of you guys get out of school or, like, get out of school later than I do, because technically I get out of school, like, at 2.30 p.m., so if you guys get out later than that, there's probably a video sitting there waiting for you guys if you guys like that and something like that. Or if you guys are also homeschool, you might be able to see the video that I get posted out early. So, good for you guys. And this is going to be a makeup because I did not make a 1,000 subscriber special. And don't think, don't do that, don't. I don't want none of y'all to be salty like that. Like, I didn't appreciate y'all. I'm appreciating y'all. That's why I made that poll. What should I do? And you guys really wanted me to do what if Deku was like Greninja. And I said, you know what? Why not? Now, I know many of y'all probably not going to watch this. Some of y'all not even going to like it because y'all salty and I understand that, you know. But other than that, this is something that I'll be doing for y'all. And y'all can post down in the comments section because I'm honestly going to make this a series just basing off of Greninja's powers. So that old Ashes Greninja, you know, becoming the Super Greninja. And all of that, that might not happen, but you guys can type down in the comment section if you want that to happen. You know, you want him to be a, you know, be like the Super Greninja, aka Ash's Greninja. Well, it's not really Super Greninja, it's Legendary Greninja, but you know. Other than that, let's get into the story, shall we? So, Deku, so I'm going to start off from when Deku's five years old, and Deku and everybody in kindergarten in his class are, you know, going off, showing their quirks. And Bakugo shows his quirk off, explosions. And... Oh, also, guys, tell me what you want in the comment section. Do you guys want, like, which, like, do you guys... You know what, I'm gonna save that for later, because I have an idea later. Oh, yeah, so Bakugo is, you know... Train, you know, showing off his quirk, thinking that he's is the best one, because it's the flashiest one, and everybody's like, ooh, ah. Uh. And then Deku's sitting in the corner, wondering what his quirk, why he doesn't really have a quirk at the moment. And then Bakugo walks over to Deku, and like, what is your quirk, Deku? And then Deku's like, I don't really know. I don't really know what my quirk is. And then Bakugo be like, so what, you're quirkless? And this is when some of the kids was, you know, the kids with quirks would start to laugh, and the kids without quirks would, you know, like, try to back him up. And... And then, of course, De and then, of course, just, you know, Everything happens the same until Deku gets home. You know, Deku goes home crying, wondering why he doesn't have a quirk, and that scene happens. And then later down in life, I'll say like in their last year of elementary school, Deku's getting harassed by Bakugo, and you know, getting harassed by Bakugo and his goons. And Deku tries to fight back. Deku. Deku. You know, tries to stand up for himself. This Deku isn't wimpy wimpy. So, because, you know. And Deku, after when they're done harassing Deku, Bakugo and his goons walk off. 
and they start bullying this girl. And this girl is asking them why. Is like one of the, yeah, one of the goons start talking to this random girl with green hair, and then this, and then the Bakugo was like, "Don't talk to that weak little, you know, B I C T H, you know." And then the girl with green hair says, "That's not nice to call a fe- call a female." And then Bakugo like, "What you say to me?" Walks over to her, getting ready to explode her. And this is when Deku. And so they're in an alleyway. So Deku's still in the alleyway while Bakugo and them are over by like a store. No, I say a hero organization, actually. They're over by a hero organization. Like a hero building, but they don't know it. And this is on the side of town. And Deku sees them getting ready to bully a girl. And then he wishes he can do something. And then this is when Deku trips on one of his shoelaces. And... I'll say that there's like a water, I'll say like his hand gets into a water pedal, like it was raining in like the day or a little bit earlier before they got out of school, and there's like water puddles everywhere, you know, after when it's a massive rainstorm, there's like water puddles, giant water puddles and all that, and then Deku's hand touches one, like lands directly in one, and then when he pulls his hand out, there's like water flowing around like the bottom of his hand, like it's glued. He tries to get it off, wave it off like it's just extra water on his hand that he doesn't need. And then he, every time he waves it off, it's not coming off. And then the water looks all deformed and everything. And then this is when... This is when Bakugo goes to explode the girl. Deku sees this and reacts on basically pure instinct. And then he... Reaches out his hand to shout out Bakugo, like, you know, and cat, you know, and can, you know, in all, basically, in all anime, the main character's running after, like, the rivals so they don't hurt anybody or running after the villain so they don't kill anybody, and they stick their one hand out and shout out, no, don't do it, and all that, yeah, you know. And then this is when Deku, before Deku could say, no, don't do it with his hand out, like, no, please don't, the water goes yeet out of his hand and then this basically knocks the wind out of one of Bakugo's goons. This is when Bakugo and one other goon turns around and see Deku and this is what the other goon would run out Deku trying to punch him. And this is when Deku would dodge. Deku would dodge on reflex. And then this is when one of Deku's and this is when Deku would kind of dodge the dude, making him, you know, Deku does this on instinct. So, you know that move that, um, who does this move? You know the, okay, if you watch, I will say John Wick Chapter 2, if anybody has ever seen that. If somebody's seen John Wick Chapter 2. John has this one move that he specifically used to take down his opponents. This is when he grabs the opponent on, like, his shoulder, but still on his arm, near his shoulder. And this is when he put his other arm underneath the person, like, underneath his legs. Don't take that the wrong way, because some of y'all might. Goes underneath his legs, and yeah. And this is when John uses nothing but pure force to kind of, bo- like, put the dude over him and body slam him onto the ground. So he does that kind of one technique. And it's a little, and it's a quick technique too. But this one relies on instinct. And it's very, it's a very quick takedown technique. And it relies on mostly human muscle. And Deku does this kind of body in this dude. You know, kind of folded this dude, right? And then Deku sees Bakugo explode the girl, making her hit, you know, exploding her onto, you know, the, due to the force and impact, kind of made her go flying, hitting the car. This is when one of Deku's fist would glow up like light color, like a glowish light. And this is when Deku would dash at Bakugo until Bakugo saying, Kanchan, that's enough! And then punch the wind. And then punch the wind, sorry about that. And then punch the wind out of Bakugo. Like, literally hit this man so hard. Deck this man so hard on his, I'll say, 
right side. Knocked him so hard that Bakugo hit his head on a concrete. And the side of Bakugo's head was bleeding. Don't worry, don't worry. I know some of you have been like, oh, Deku kind of killed Bakugo. Because you do know if you hit the concrete car enough, the side of your head is where the most nerves are at. And those nerves get busted, you're automatic dead. Dead like a fish, literally. And Blake, no, 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 Bakugo gets to live in this one. There's no accidental killing yet. And, yeah, Deku and then a hero would hear this and run out, would literally appear somehow out of the building, wrapping Deku around, saying, what, didn't the rule about no using your powers, kid? And then... Dick would say, my bad, it was on accident. And then the hero he would see is the hero, is the ninja hero known as Ed Shop. You know, the guy that could basically flatten his body, you know, manipulate his body and all that. You know, make himself flat, you know, make himself like string, like his arms like string texture to wrap opponents. You know, he basically, basically has kind of a nice level of body manipulation. I think that's his quirk. So, yeah. Yeah, we're going to call his quirk body manipulation because that's obviously what he does. He manipulates his body. So, yeah. So, this is the pro hero ninja known as Edshot. And the, then Edshot, I'm going to say that Edshot actually saw what happened because he heard when the goons yell out the B word pretty loudly. And this is when, yeah, Deck, and then this is when Deku tells him everything would happen. Ed Shot gets the girl to the hospital because she kind of broke her, you know, kind of broke her arm a little bit. And gets the girl to the hospital, and Deku just goes home. And then when Deku goes home, he tells his mom that he like he runs straight to his mom and says, "Mom, guess what?" She says, "What, Izuku?" And this is skinny, and this I'm gonna say that his mom is skinny. In this. So yeah. I'm going to say his mom is skinny in this. And then Deku talks. You know. Talks to basically her. And tells her that he had the ability. To control water. Like water kinesis or something like that. And then, and then she says. Zuku what do you mean? And then this is what Zuku would turn on a kitchen faucet. And he would grab one of the big pots. And then he would fill it up with water. And then he would put his hand in a pot. And then as soon as he brings his hand up, she sees that there's water on the bottom of his hand. Like, it's not coming off. And then Deku starts to play with it like a yo-yo. And then she says, so you have a water manipulation. And then she was like, so you have a water manipulation quirk. And then he says, that's not all. Uh, I think when I went for, like, a punch to attack Bakugo. And then she says, attack Bakugo? Why did you attack Bakugo? And then Deku explains everything what happened that she understands. You know, she gets the general gist. And then this is when Deku was like, yo, my fist like glue up a little bit. And then I punched him, kind of knocking him out. Because he wouldn't stop. And then she was like, don't remember, violence isn't always the answer to certain solutions. And he was like, I know, mom, I know. And then this is when Izuku and Ingo would go straight to the court doctor. And the court doctor would run a bitch load of tests. And then the court doctor says that Izuku Midoriya does have a quirk. And then his mom asks him what kind of quirk is it. And then Izuku, then the doctor would say the quirk is, we're going to call this. And then this quirk is one of the newfound quirks. And then a new, and then Inka would say a newfound quirk. And then, yes, and then the doctor's like, we had a few ratings of kids coming in with powerful quirks. There was a kid that had a lightning bolt shaped tail and he can control electricity to basically any margin he wants. And he was able to turn his tail into like pure iron and whack attacks back at people. Almost like a counter attack. And we had an, and then, but he had red cheeks for some reason that conducted mainly the electricity. Then we had another kid that basically, then we had another kid, he had basically like, he had something to do with, 
well, this kid, she, she had basically something to do with hoops, like, her hoops can open up, like, wormholes, and she can use her her hoops to, um, control people, and she was able to, like, control certain of her body parts, so they can move on their own, but they will always be connected to the hoops, so, yeah, so, and, and then, there's a third kid, and this kid, basically, he had something to do with wings, and he had a tail, and then at the end of the tail, it was always lit on fire, so, yeah, and he has sharp fangs, and very, and kind of sharp, you know, his, he can sharpen his nails to, like, hard claws, and yeah, there's, there's newfound quirks, we're gonna, they're, we're, they're called, we're calling them the, basically the cork mons, we're calling them, we're calling these newfound quirks, quirk mons, and yes, it's Pokemon and quirks put together, quirk mon, and your son seems to be one of them, he has the ability of, which is called, his ability to manipulate water, and like control it, he can also use his tongue to stretch it to basically a certain length, and to wrap his opponents, and his tongue is very sticky, so it's good for sticking onto opponents, he also has the ability to, you know, stick onto certain objects, say like the wall, but it's only for a certain amount of time before he has to, you know, either his his stitch stuff becomes, you know, you know, becomes untouchable and he falls off the wall, or he has to keep climbing up at a certain speed and rank. And if he wants to, he can basically later in life, if he trains hard enough, he can later in life just run up a wall easily. And he also has this crystal-like sword that he's able to pull out and use as a melee weapon. But it's not really a sword. It's more like a long dagger or a short sword. It's like a long dagger of some sort. We don't know. Due to how it looks and it looks all crystally, you can't really get out the kind of the made of it. So... Then the last thing he has, he has something called Aerial Ace. This is something we call for fast movements. This ability, Aerial Ace, is very, very effective, especially for close combat. This allows the person with this ability to move and have incredible, well, mostly incredible reaction time and speed, and they can glow up a general part of their body to increase like that little light thing that you explained to us when you're fist glue, yeah, basically you can control any part of that to your body to increase its strength, so you can do harder attacks. And you, and other than that, you also have an enhanced senses like taste, sight, hearing, and all that good stuff. And we see that there's a few more abilities. <laughs> later on that you should be able to get but for now these are your main pretty good kid then this is when Deku would go home you know all excited and then we would and then I'm gonna skip to the beginning of the anime you know everything in canon stays the same cause Deku see that Deku would use his you know since De the only thing that would change is Deku's popularity because in school, everybody would know him as one of the few kids alive that has um, a Corkmon. That's a Corkmon. And these are very special people. Like, they have multiple powers. Some even have their own regeneration powers. Well, and the thing about Pokemons, and I'm going to say all the Pokemons, even though this is not really true about Pokemons themselves, Corkmons are going to have that slight regeneration ability. Alright, I'm not going to say anything too massive. I'm just going to say they're going to have that faster, way faster regeneration capability. So, yeah. People are like, yo. And especially some of the girls are like, you know. If you, like, you're like talking about, you know, girl stuff. Some girls will be like, oh. You do know if you get, you know, get with a poke, like a Corkmon. You know, get with like a Corkmon, like, 
person, like a guy, your child is deemed automatically powerful. It's like deemed automatically powerful. Like, you don't even know. Like, we don't even know the full limits. There's only like a few in the world. Like, very little few in the world. And then, yeah. And then Deku's known as the Quirkmon. And then, you know, Deku goes home the same way. I'll say the sludge villain attack does happen, but Deku's able to fight off by using his little crystal weapon, his little crystal dagger. I think it's a dagger. It's probably like, I know it's a small, it's a very small version of a katana, but I can't remember the name of it. That's what this shape's like. So, yeah. Deku, oh, if you're wondering why I didn't add in the ability of Froki from, like, Froki and Frogadier with the whole sticky, the whole sticky scarf thing situation, like, webbing scarf thing that they have on, is because that's Frogadier and Froki, and they have that, and the reason, and the reason why I can't really give Deku that, the same thing that Froki and Frogadier had, that little webbing scarf, is because that later got transformed when they evolve into Greninja. They don't have that no more. That substitute for their net, for their um, their tongue, the, their tongue scarf. So yeah, yeah. So Deku later, you know, so. Deku does fight it off, and I'm gonna say that this little, you know, the little crystal blade that Deku has is very hot. Like, it's very hot. It can basically pierce through almost anything. And every time he cuts, you know, slices at the slime, the slime is like, ah, that, that, that burns, that stings. What, what is that? Ah. And then, this is when, you know, Deku would literally, you know, tap, would literally, he. I'll say that Deku does what Greninja does for, you know, making those water shurikens. He, like, taps his leg, and he brings it up, and then he just flings it, flings it, flings water. He's flinging water around like a boomerang, hitting this man, and then it explodes on impact, knocking the sludge villain back a little bit. So, yeah. And then this is when we have the same thing in canon. All Might would appear, and then, you know... Says, don't have no fear for I am here. Sorry about the background noise. That's a train in the background. And then All Might would be like, uh, uh. And then, you know, do the same smash, knocking out the sledge villain. Deku would act for an autograph. And then this is, and I'm going to say the same thing happens in canon. Deku grabs onto All Might's leg. Then instead of asking All Might, can he become a hero without a quirk? Deku is going to ask All Might, can I become a hero with a quirk? Being known as a Quirkmon. And All Might has heard of them. And he is very shocked to meet a Quirkmon. And then Deku gives some evidence in details. Shows him evidence in detail that he is a Quirkmon. And then he is like, whoa. You're a Quirkmon? Imagine. So yeah, All Might does happen in canon. Goes into Small Might. You know, same thing happens. And all like that gushies. And then the same thing happens with the Sludge Villain and Bakugo. And the only difference this time is that Deku would have more, would just, would actually do more damage. Because all he did was throw his book bag and scrape at the Sludge Villain try to get Bakugo out. But I'll say that he would do this a little bit more effectively. Because he would throw his bag and after when the bag hits somewhat of the sludge villain's eye, he would do arrow lace, just increase the speed movement, just to punch the punch the eye, making the sludge villain hurt dramatically. And this is when he would use his crystal blade to cut out Bakugo grabbing onto him. And then this is when Deku would shoot out his tongue, grabbing onto a light pole nearby, and then kind of just slingshot his way out of there. And then this is when All Might reverts, use whatever energy he has left to revert back into his, you know. All Might form from Small Might back to All Might would do the same smash, changing the weather and all that. And then Deku would get, you would you know, get surrounded by the media and all that good stuff. And they would ask him, 
what what is your cork? And then he would say, I'm a corkmon. And then people, like the news reporters, everyone's heard of corkmons and all that. And then, like, a corkmon has saved the day besides the number one hero. Beside, you know, side by side, the number one hero. This is when all might be like, not bad. Kid, you corkmons are pretty powerful, you know. Acting to act in front of, you know, cameras. Because he's all might, he has to act the part. And this is when All Might would jump off, and this is when Deku would use his tongue to kind of like, you know, Spidey swing his way around. And then Deku gets halfway home, and then the same thing happens in canon, and All Might confronts Deku. Not like that, not like that. And, you know, he asks him the same thing, and then the whole thing happens the same way in canon. And then Deku agrees to All Might training him. And I'm gonna wrap it up right here. I know, I know, pretty long, pretty boring. Well, you are probably gonna get mad at me, which I normally do, because I see it in the comments. Please don't make me cry again. And I love you all. Thank you. This is 100 subscriber special. Deku, as a, what if Deku was just like Miracle, the bunny rabbit hero? What if Deku was a bunny rabbit? Part will be coming out straight after this today. I hope you guys like both videos. And yes, it's a double upload day. And I'll catch you guys in the next part. Peace out, fans.